make up more than half of the population. We know that. And yet our trajectory into the senior levels of business leadership is still somewhat stilted. We're almost a rare species. We know that only a quarter of women in senior levels of leadership are female and less than 5% of Fortune 500 CEOs identify as female. In this era of Me Too, is the idea of male mentorship also going to become endangered? Now, we have a fabulous all-female panel to discuss this now, so give them a round of applause as they head up to the stage. Laurie Adams, the CEO of Women for Women International. Lauren Petrowski from the TV station KTBC. Businesswoman and CEO Kendra Scott, as well as DJ and brand ambassador for Women for Women, Zara Martin. Okay. Have this open. <laughs> Have it ready. ready to go. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. This turnout is incredible. Uh, and yes, once again, I'm going to echo the Deputy Prime Minister and thank you, the men who are in the room today. On a day when we celebrate women's achievements, but also talk about the work that still needs to be done and highlight some of the inequalities that still exist. Um, I'm Lauren Petrowski. I work at uh, the local Fox station here on Good Day Austin. I have been in TV news for 13 years and I'm so excited uh, to introduce our three very outstanding and inspiring women who are on this panel, all from very different walks of life, I think going to bring very uh, unique perspectives to this conversation as we talk about the role of men in women's empowerment. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, we've really seen a cultural uh, revolution of sorts where women have come out, come forward, said, I'm mad as hell, I'm not going to stand for this anymore. You know, we're talking about uh, sexual harassment, inequality in the workplace, lack of opportunity for women at the top. As a result, of course, we've seen the Me Too movement that's spread really across the country and, and around the world. Uh, and now that we've identified some of the problems as more women are comfortable coming forward to speak, uh, then we can work on what needs to be done to, to fix some of these problems. So uh, we've talked about, we're going to be talking about male mentorship a lot um, because for a lot of this Me Too movement, what's come out of this um, is maybe something that we don't want to see. Uh, there was a recent survey, Monkey and LeanIn.org study that showed nearly half of the men surveyed say that they don't feel comfortable being alone with a female colleague or socializing or traveling or mentoring a female colleague, that's definitely, that's not what we want to see come from this. So uh, we need to talk about how we can keep male mentors uh, in the business world and, and go about doing that. So um, let's get to the conversation. Uh, Kendra, I want to start with you. Uh, you have a extremely successful female dominated company. But of course, there are men who work for you and some top male execs. I want to know what you make of uh, that survey uh, that says, you know, nearly half of men don't feel comfortable socializing, being alone with, or, or mentoring their female colleagues. You know, Lauren, I think it's an environment and that's, you know, we've seen so much happen, right? You said over the last 18 months and bravery, right, of so many women coming mm -hmm. out. But I think what has not been spoken about as much or celebrated is the men who do do positive things and support women. Those stories have not been shared as much. And so what I think has happened is that imbalance, right, of we really wanted to come out, like you said, we're mad as hell. Mm -hmm. We wanted, you know, to do, like, like we, we're, do, we did that, right? We, as women, also, we, we joined hands. We decided that we were going to support each other, lift each other up, not tear each other down, that we were going to, you know, have each other's back. But what didn't get talked about, and I think where we have an opportunity now that we've kind of gotten through that period, is to really start talking about the stories of the men that also lift women up. You know, I am a product of an amazing family and a father who told me as a little girl that I could grow up and be anything I wanted to be. And also told me that, you know, no means no, and, when, you know, and how to protect myself in, in situations that may be unsafe. 
I'm now a mother of three boys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I say all the time, like, as a mother, I have a responsibility now to raise these boys into men. Men who respect women, who treat women as equal, who lead with a kind and generous heart. And if we can get more of our young men to turn, in, you know, turn into these type of examples, mm -hmm. we're gonna set ourselves up for a really beautiful future. So I think a lot of that yeah. starts there. Um, but it is a very tricky time, and I know we do feel it, and I know that some of my you know, team members feel it. And so it's a lot for us too, is training in the workplace to mm -hmm. say, this is appropriate behavior, this is not appropriate behavior, but we also need to figure out how to build the bridge back to these women, female and male relationships, where they can have friendships, that they can mentor and support each other. And this isn't about one versus the other. Right. I mean, again, as women, when we held hands, look what happened. Now, if those women can hold hands with their mm -hmm. male counterparts in business, I mean, what a world this could be. Yeah. I want to continue talking about getting men involved. Uh, Lori, as the head of Women for Women, uh, at some point, that it came to that with your organization. First of all, I share with our audience the amazing work that Women for Women does. Uh, so Women for Women International works with women survivors of war in 10 countries across um, the world, places where it's really, really difficult to be a woman. Afghanistan, South Sudan, um, Congo, Northern Nigeria, where conflict, poverty, and gender discrimination come together. And um, we were founded 25 years ago by a woman, Zainab Salbi, but also by her husband, Amjad Atala. And one of the interesting things is the role that Amjad took more in the back seat, yeah. um, but also helping the organization to really grow. So Women for Women um, is a sponsorship program. Women here in the US and around the world, 400,000 women and men, give a monthly sum which allows women to go through our program, and that's incredibly powerful. But in 2002, um, we started working with men as well, training men because the women in the program, and that's where all of our interventions come from, women on the ground tell us this is what we need. Mm -hmm. They said, look, you've taught us about our rights, but when we go home um, and you've given us negotiating skills and you've helped us with business skills, but if our men don't let us leave the house, as is often the case in Afghanistan, um, or if our men get threatened by the income that we have, we can't, we can't do this on our own. So we started training men and we now have had 23,000 uh, men go through our program. Um, yes, I love yeah. that. And it's always men who are training men. So for example, in Afghanistan, it's actually progressive mullahs mm. who say, you know, this is a myth. It's not true that the Quran says that you have to beat your wife. That's not true. Um, and so progressive men standing up. Um, one other just small story, we are mostly, we're 70% women as staff, mm -hmm. but one of um, our most fabulous staff members is our country, uh, country director in Congo. In Congo, about 70% of women um, experience violence in the home. And Toure makes it a point. Toure is our country director. He goes out to men who he knows are abusers, and he invites them to sit down for a conversation. And he, you know, without any blame, says, you know, why, why do you do this? Mm -hmm. And often it comes from a feeling of powerlessness. You know, I can't support my family. I feel shame. You know, when I can't... Uh, support my family and I feel so bad I, I get so angry mm -hmm. and he talks them through that and he coaches them and mentors them to stop that and to find a way of being at peace in the home so uh, we're called women for women but men are an incredibly important part yeah that is incredible and like you said women for women you have a lot of women on your staff you're working for women but you couldn't make a lot of the work happen without having the men involved in that very important role that they have taken on. Um, Zara, I think you bring a really unique perspective to this because uh, you're a model, actress, DJ in the entertainment world, but then also Women for Women ambassador and have decided to take that on. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that you've seen when it comes to working alongside men. Well, I think... Um one of the questions or things that we talked about earlier was about the shifting attitudes of the younger men in these territories yeah. or the countries that Women for Women um, serve. And younger men definitely have a, have a completely different outlook. And this is mainly due to the men's engagement program, which Laurie will probably talk about in, in a bit, um, because they ha now have access to information that wasn't available before. Um, so the men's engagement program was started by Women for Women because it is so important to include men in the conversation. Yeah. We are trying to change 
these deep-seated cultural norms and to provide an environment where women can flourish. We cannot imagine, like most women or men sitting here today will not believe the discrimination that these women in countries affected by war are facing on a daily basis just because of their gender. Mm -hmm. And it is so important to shift these attitudes and we can do it and we are doing it. As Laurie said, over 20,000 men um, for over the past six years? Um, no, 2012, so... Most of them in the last 10 years. Yeah. Okay, in the last 10 years, have um, been enrolled in this program mm -hmm. across like six to 10 countries. They are cultural leaders, they are community leaders, they are men in the military. They are using their influence within their communities to promote women's rights. And this is what we need to see more of, and this is yeah. what we need to do. So. Yeah, and that's why we're here today, supporting Women for Women International and programs like this. Uh, Kendra, how did you get on board and, and want to support this amazing organization? It's kind of a funny story. So I was in London, and we were opening up our first shop and shop in London and Selfridges. And Zara came to a dinner, and right away we just connected. And she started sharing with me her passion for this amazing organization. And immediately, I was like, how do I not know about this? First of all, um, because we are so engaged with helping women throughout the world. And the more I learned, the more I knew we had to get involved. And it's amazing, we were just saying, you know, that was a little over a year ago. Yep. And here we are on International Women's Day, a conversation that took place in a restaurant came to fruition, and we're now in full partnership with Women for Women. And she's used her voice and her celebrity um, to really bring awareness to this amazing organization. And you really are the most beautiful person on the inside, even more than on the outside, <laughs> if that's possible. Um, and I was so thrilled that we have a friendship and more thrilled that we could work together. Yeah. I mean, the feeling was completely mutual. It was the like we, we, we fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I know, it was like the whole room like floated <laughs> away and there was just Kendra. Um, well, but two amazing women making <laughs> incredible things happen yeah. for an organization well, that's that does so say, much good. Everyone, wherever you are, especially you know here, you're here in my hometown. I think the greatest city in the on the planet. Um, but you never know the people you'll meet at some of these functions, and to not be on your phone the whole time. Like talk to your neighbor, talk to the person sitting next to you, get to know the things that they're passionate about. Because you could leave here this weekend with a new best friend and a new passion in your life that you didn't even know you existed. So. Um, I always say kind of pay attention to that yes. moment, right? So I want to continue to talk about mentorship a little bit uh, and ask each of you uh, if you have a mentor that really had an impact on you, man or woman. You know, I know I've had in my life so many amazing men. And I talked about my father being, you know, the, one of the first. Um, but I've had, you know, my, one of my dearest friends, Steve Hicks, he's an incredible entrepreneur, amazing philanthropist. I always just admired him so much. And he saw something in me, and he would coach me, and I would call him, and I'd say, I need advice. How do I do this? And he believed in me. And I could see that belief in his eyes. Like, if he believed in me, well, then maybe I could do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's such an important thing for women to have these male mentors and female mentors. When we've got 95% of, you know, C-level executives and managers are men, if we don't allow those men to be able to mentor the women below, those women will never be able to rise. So mm -hmm. there has to be that balance and you know I'm so thankful that I've had these amazing people in my journey and you know every day I wake up and I'm running a company bigger than it was the night before and I always say you know if I didn't have these amazing people men and women that I could pick up the phone and call we would not be sitting here today. Yeah. Zara you've traveled all around the world as you mentioned um, throughout your career talk about some people who have had a big impact on your life. You know it's funny because I haven't actually had a mental mentor mm -hmm. like I have people that I can call up for advice or if I need perspective on things and those are men and women um, I think it's incredibly important to have those people in your life it, it just is but I wish I met Kendra before because she's a keen mentor <laughs> she's a to good women mentor and yes. men but and and she really is making you're making a huge difference in people's lives and especially um we haven't talked about it yet, but I feel like now is a good time to interject. So Kendra has teamed up with Women for Women um, to produce this beautiful charm that I'm wearing around my neck, um, which, like. is, <laughs> which is available to buy. And uh, today on International Women's Day, 100% of the proceeds are going to Women for Women International, which help 
It's a charity that helps rebuild the lives of women affected by war and conflict. And it's such a worthy, really, if you are going to spend $25 yeah. today, just buy a charm. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So mentors that are making changes in people's lives, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, want, I want one. Um, <laughs> Laura, you as well have traveled all around the world. Uh, growing up, you lived all around the world. That's really helped shape why you do what you do. Uh, were there men or women who had a big impact on, on why you're working for Women for Women now? No, absolutely. Um, I think there's, um, you know, there, there are the men who are in power who help you. And there were um, a Nepali gentleman called Ramesh Singh, a Brazilian called Adriano Campolina, who really taught me as a CEO now, I, I, I remember like, oh, you know, I learned that from them both from watching them. Ramesh was one of the most humble leaders I have ever met in my entire life. Uh, he led from behind. Um, and now, 15 years later, I'm still like, oh, I didn't appreciate what he did. Yeah. Little things wasn't you remember. Visible. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's how he kept his board united. Wow. You know, so there's that leading from behind I learned. Mm. But I think it's still, um, it is the women we serve and the men that we serve who are the ones who keep me going every single day. Yeah. I mean, there's a, I was in um, Rwanda and we had 800 women graduating from our program um, all at once in this remote rural valley. And they had, as we were driving in in our four by four, people were carrying chairs from like 10 miles, you know, five miles away, like to, to have this amazing party for these women who were graduating, right? Most of them non-literate. And, um, and the men who had graduated from the men's program also came, and they also came up and spoke. But the part that really has stayed with me was a local village chief who went up and he did a skit, which first of all is already sort of not traditional. He did a skit with some other men where he held a baby, which is non-traditional, and then he swept the floor, which is non-traditional, to show all of these thousands of people gathered that it's okay for a man to do housework <laughs> and it's okay for a man to take care of the baby. And that one moment probably wow. did more than anything else. Wow. So those kinds of models are just phenomenal. And you know, it's not easy for guys to step out like that. It really isn't mm -hmm. because you know, you get called a cuckold. I mean, an another guy in another village, um, he got up and he said, you know, when I started letting my wife go to market, you all said I had been, um, bewitched, you know, through witchcraft. Mm. Now, I have a television and a tin roof. Yeah. So, um, so let your wife go out and work and you'll do better. Yeah. So, um, men like that who wow. are brave enough to break the, the stereotypes are, are powerful models. Yeah. Uh, we want to talk about how do we create a culture or maintain it in some instances where um, men do feel safe and comfortable and want to empower women. Uh, we talked about the results of that survey. Also, you know, Vice President Mike Pence has come out saying he has his own personal rule. He doesn't eat alone with a female. He doesn't attend an event where there's alcohol involved without his wife because that's how he wants to make sure he's never accused of anything. How do we maintain a culture where men don't have to worry about something like that? I mean, I think part of it starts from, you know, leading by example, right? And when at Kendra Scott, we hire people on their heart and that cultural fit. We treat each other like family, which means we treat each other like brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And how would you treat your sister? You would be thoughtful and you would root for her and you would be there for her and you sure would protect her and you would make sure that no harm came her way. Mm -hmm. And we have zero tolerance at Kendra Scott for anything but that. Zero. It's not like, okay, you know, if that just doesn't happen and it can't happen. Um, and I think that is the mentality and culture is so important in all aspects of life. But I always say before a gold-plated resume, I always hire on heart first. And using, you know, women, we've been given a gift of intuition. And so when you're in a situation or you're interviewing or you're meeting someone and something is off and you just know it, yeah. you have to listen to that. When your stomach kind of, or you're, you know, you kind of, something's off, you have to listen to that. And we really try to pay attention to that when we're bringing new people into our team, men and women. And we want to make sure that we're creating this very inclusive environment. And that is a, that is a difficult thing in a time period like today. I mean, we are 95% women at Kendra Scott. We have over 2,000 employees across the country. Um, so the men who come into our organization are brave. 
I mean, that is a lot of estrogen, okay? I'm here today. They are brave, yeah. and they are amazing, and we are like, more men come to Kendra Scott. We want them, but I mean, yeah. you could see where you'd be afraid of an army of thousands of women, um, but they're amazing, and they're such a gift to our company, and they are our brothers, mm -hmm. and, you know, and we have formed these amazing family relationships together, and it really is a culture. I think that's where you create that, and when you have trust, Trust is earned, right? But you have to be willing to give that trust you know, to someone else and give them the opportunity. And I think that's what we, again, it's the bridge that we've got to try to figure out how to build. Sorry, I'm sure it's important for you in some instances to work alongside men. Make sure that you're both comfortable working with each other. Yeah, definitely. But I also am a big believer that it's an equality issue. Mm -hmm. Like it's up to both men and women to make sure that both genders are comfortable in a comfortable environment mm -hmm. so that they can both flourish. Yeah. Lori, anything to add about, I mean, obviously with you, you're focusing on these women turning their lives around, but within the office, how do you maintain that culture of men and women working together, feeling safe and comfortable alongside one another? Well, I agree entirely with Kendra. It's about the organizational culture you set up. And I think it's really important to have safe spaces of dialogue. I have two sons as well. 23 and 24, Aww. and they're like, you know, how, are they still allowed to ask girls out on dates? Uh, you know, it, it's, it is hard and confusing um, to, to be a progressive man. And so, um, and this is why we set up things like religion and cultural norms, so that you have rules to follow. So when the rules are gone and you don't know what to do anymore, but I think it's about having open conversations. In our program, we have this thing called couples dialogues, where women have their training and then men have their training, and then we bring women and men together. It's really important to have the safe space, right? It is still important for women to be able to speak to women, men to be able to speak to men, but it's also important to come together. And you know, I think about, um, you don't have to do mentoring the way we use it doesn't have to be over dinner and wine right you know it can be over lunch and it can be in a place like your first date if you do online dating right you don't do it in a dark danky place you do it someplace where there's public to watch you right so, so do your mentoring where you feel safe and where you're making uh, where the other person feels safe too so i think it's about having the conversations and finding places where people feel safe and 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 challenging it like you know be brave don't don't and I, you know, I do frankly think sometimes maybe it's a little bit of an excuse and a backlash, you know, of a sort of, um, you're making this really hard. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's been hard as a woman to stand up and you, know, you call yourself a feminist and you got that backlash. So it is hard to stand up and change culture. Um, and it's great that both men and women are doing it. Yeah. Uh, I wanna make sure, uh, real quick, uh, that we let people know where they can find out more information about Women for Women International if they wanna get involved and just find out more. Yeah. Well, one thing you should, uh, International Women's Day, our campaign is message to my sister. So we have um, a sponsorship program and people write to the women in the program. And I've seen women literally reach in and pull out a letter that they've been holding for years. And women will say, it means so much to me to know that a woman or a man in America cares about me. For them, that's just absolutely incredible. So for International Women's Day, we're doing message to my sister, and Kendra has set up a table at the back where you can write a message, and we'll make sure it gets to a woman in Congo or Afghanistan or South Sudan, wow. who will then feel the solidarity of everyone mm -hmm. in this room. Um, women for, you can do it online at womenforwomen.org. You can do it on Facebook. Um, fill out a message uh, electronically, and we will get it to a woman who will feel the support mm -hmm. of everyone in this room. Well, you are doing truly incredible work, and we're so glad that you have connected with Zara and Kendra so that they can continue to spread this message. Uh, anything else with our final seconds, ladies, that you want to make sure um, we get out to our audience today? You know, I just think it's phenomenal that we're here on International Women's Day together. And again, you guys are in my favorite place in the whole world. Um, today is a day to celebrate the magnificence of women, the beauty of women. Um, and I'm just, you know, I know for our company being here in Austin, we are so thrilled that we can celebrate with all of these people visiting yeah. our awesome city. So People visiting for the first time, including Zara and Lori. Yeah. Anyone else out there first time in Austin? Welcome. We're so happy to have you. We hope you enjoy South by Zara. Any last words? Yeah, I, I mean, today is International Women's Day, but it's not this, what we've been talking about isn't something that should just be 
you know, close the book on tomorrow. It's still an ongoing struggle and o ongoing conversation. So we'd really love to keep that open with you. If you would like to do that, please like go to the go to the website, check Kendra's website for the charm. Like I've got loads of information on my Instagram. I do try and write everyone back. So yeah, let's just keep it going. Yeah. And I just want to say, um, you know, Kendra, but also Lauren and Zara, you are the epitome of the models that we that we try to share with our the women we serve, women who have overcome incredible odds yourselves to create successful careers and then to add philanthropy to it. So just extremely grateful for being on this platform with you uh, to help spread uh, women's rights across the globe. So thank you very much for supporting us, but also for being such amazing models yourselves. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm honored to be here with you amazing ladies today. This is something that we could continue to talk about, I think, for hours. Uh, the conversation shouldn't stop here. It's a very important topic to explore in your own workplace alongside men or women. So thank you so much to everyone for attending. And hopefully you'll check out um, the installation we have set up in the back. And enjoy South By. Write a note. Yeah. <laughs>